Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I'm waiting on parts. I have like seven amps here. Just waiting on parts. I'm going to get back to work tomorrow. So, I had some time to work on my personal amplifier. So, I'm going to show you what I did. Okay, so first off, have the tube installed, have the resonant load resistor in there, non-inductive carbon type rheostat, the resistor in series, it's set to, I think it's 1605 ohms, that simulates the plate impedance at full output. So, I always like doing it this way, with the strap, so strap that's up against the anode, you know, the outer portion of the radiator with a hose clamp, and I solder another piece to it, so it looks like kind of like a T, and it's secured over here to the plate blocker assembly. So the coil has been tapped, 160 through 15. So I just want to do a video real quick on this and I still need to, still going to solder all of the connections. Went around the material, cleaned it really good, around it, nice and tight, like clamped around, but I'm still going to solder it. You can see all the connections. So from the plate tune vacuum variable capacitor over to the end of the pre-inductor. So this is the pre-inductor right here. And uh, Jim will explain all this, but that allows me to run a normal Q. Scrubs off some of the internal electrode, inter-electrode capacitance between the anode and the grid. So, have that connection from here to there. This is the 15 meter tap right here. Got the 20 meter tap right here. 80 meter, uh, no, I'm sorry, 20 meter, 40 meter, 80 meter. And this is the 160 coil. So you can see the proper clearance between everything so nothing will arc. Up here, so you have over two inches from this coil to the top cover. So that's good. You guys, a really good look at it. Yep, there's some metal shavings and might be some nuts down there that I dropped, but that yep, there's a screw. But yeah, that'll get cleaned out. Let's see. It's a really good look. Again, yeah, this is my own personal box. If I make another at some point, it's going to be in a larger cabinet. It's going to be configured differently. So this was just so much more work trying to work around getting it all to fit in this nice cabinet. So. I already had the band switch, I already had this vacuum variable cap, this one over here, I have like I don't know, four of those I think, but not for sale, keeping them for future projects. So I added a standoff over here on the side and I cut a copper strip and contoured it, you know I kind of curled it over so it's soldered, cups the side of the quarter inch material and it's all soldered together, it gives it more support. And everything is good. So that's about it for now. I still have to add the spark gap. I have one on the load side. I'm going to put one on the plate side also. And that's about it for now. So I wanted to show you guys. And I resonated it on each band with my comet. Back fed 
into the output connector and I have a supply that's firing the relays right here. So that's it. So thanks for watching. More to come. But that was like the hardest part. Now I have to work on the protection circuit. And uh, the reason why I'm reusing the board, the stock board, is so I can reuse these meters. I have four sets of them. So why not, right? Um, in order to use these meters, I need to use that board because the meters are 100 microamps each. So the meter board drives the meters. The meter board slash protection board. So, um, like I said, I'm going to solder everything up and then careful. I'm going to solder everything up and add the spark gap and pull the tube out and then work on the protection circuit. But input and output networks are done. Oh yeah, I also have to stick the plate choke in there. Uh, that's a uh, loaded ferrite type choke that my buddy Jim sent me. So that you know um, he's gonna start selling those I guess once we get this one tested in here uh, well, more of those will be uh, available so stay tuned more to come please like share and subscribe but look at all this work man a lot of copper and I already have this coil I have a whole box of them so again personal box this is just they, they put like a clear lacquer or something over it and silver plated I, I cleaned it off I, I don't even care and I'm the only one that will see this but I'm the kind of guy who cares more about if something's built properly you know they're versus being all sorts of nice and pretty you know because it's a uh, you know not an all show no go kind of guy you know so all the components have been selected so you know the box can produce its full output uh, in any mode you know continuous duty cycle so CCS rated so it was a real chore getting everything to fit in here so. yeah, nice look. And there's over two inches from, actually it's a, yeah, over two inches from the bottom of the coil to the chassis, because those are two inch standoffs down there. So we have lots of clearance between any, uh, any point that could arc. So, I am so relieved. This really uh, put my brain to the test. First, uh, first one I've done like this, so this was... Definitely a fun learning experience. I also have to add the safety choke. That has not been installed either. So the plate choke and the safety choke, spark gap, solder everything. And I'm going to figure out the, the ventilation. I don't know if I'm going to have another chimney here and just exhaust most out the top. But uh, you know, I have the solid cover. I might just put a perforated piece over that corner. Uh, this has an oversized blower. So... It's all about ratings and, you know, the uh, manufacturer's ratings for each part, what, you know, what they can out for current, voltage, temperature, all that, you know, so. But, getting there, almost there. <laughs> well, the rest to me is easy stuff. Minus the protection circuit. Once that's done, then the rest is smooth sailing. The rest is uh, just like any other box. So this was a lot of fun and came out nice. So someone might say, "Oh, why don't you pull it all out, silver plated?" Nah, I'm good with this. I'm not gonna pull it all out and risk damaging a coil or having it lost. I know you could rub that. There's there's this kind that you could rub on, but you know, I've sent stuff out in the past to, to be silver plated. We make one for someone else and they really wanted the coil silver plated. I'd get the material silver plated before I wound it. Before I wound the coils with the material. But uh, silver plating 
doesn't help at all. It doesn't, it, it's just more of a, you know, looks better, you know, it's just more, you know, it's just prettier, I guess, but it does not electrically enhance the, the, um, material at all, so, but, okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos on this amplifier. AmpRepairGuy.com 203-892-4119-73.